Hey everyone, I'm doing something different from the usual today because I'm in the process of trying to make some upgrades to my videos. My recording setup is modest, uh, at best. The video editor I've been using crashes, I could go on. But one thing I'm particularly interested in is improving close-up video segments where I'm soldering or otherwise trying to show you something tiny and hard to see. My regular camera gives pretty marginal results in this area, so I thought I'd just pick up a simple USB microscope to solve that problem. Well, things spiraled into a bit of a journey, and today I'm going to tell you about it. This video is not sponsored. No free product was provided by any company nor distribution channel mentioned within. The journey started over the holidays, when I asked for and was gifted the most affordable USB microscope I could find on Amazon. Thanks, Mom. Please don't be mad about what happens. And that very microscope is our first contender. The G-U-C? Oh, the juicy one? Let's go with that. This scope is sold by Juicy One LLC for the low price of $25, which is pretty impressive. Now let's see how it fared. The parts all went together quick and easy, and while the company has their own software, I just used the camera app in Windows. So the picture quality actually didn't look too bad, especially when comparing it to a simple zoom from my camera. Minimum magnification was 40x, and I was wishing I had the ability to back it out a bit further. The scope maxed out at 480p, which can be artificially increased using the Juicy One software. With the provided mount, there was very little space to move the subject around. Anything bigger than a pocket watch was likely to cause a problem here. Looking at something with smaller components, there was a noticeable downgrade in picture quality after refocusing, and I attributed this mostly to insufficient lighting available on the scope. Given the price, this scope was actually pretty impressive, but for me though, I was looking for something with higher quality video that would better blend in with regular footage from my camera. And so these reasons led me to purchasing and trying out another option. Sorry, Mom. Our second contender was the 2 megapixel scope from Pluggable Technologies. Coming in at another low price of just $40, let's see how it stacked up against the juicy one. From assembly to viewing, getting started was just as easy as before, and it even had brightness adjustment. How fancy. This scope was 10x minimum mag, so I could back out a more comfortable distance for a broader field of view. Looking for widescreen, I had to sacrifice some resolution, maxing out at 720p. This was nice compared to the first scope, but the quality looked only marginally better, if at all, even after playing with the lighting. An important note is that the suction cup mount would not hold without a polished surface such as the one on their provided base plate. I was a little disappointed by that, but in hindsight, I should have expected it. Looking at smaller components, the picture quality suffered just like with the first scope. I actually turned the LED completely off, and in some ways it improved the picture quality, but it does look grainy. Again, for the price, this is a decent scope, but I still wasn't quite sold on it. So I continued my search and purchased yet another one. Our third times the charm contender was the Eliclive EDM9. This one sells for $90 on Amazon. I like that it was advertised with 1080p, a vertical mounting system, and improved adjustability. I planned to connect to a computer anyway, so I wasn't a huge fan of the included screen. Still, it was the best I could find without blowing up the cost too much. Let's see how it looked. Unfortunately, the scope could only record 1080p to an SD card, and when connected to a PC like you see here, it's limited to 720. In spite of that, I was getting a better picture than the last scope simply by having more freedom to adjust the lighting amount and angle. Looking at smaller components showed the most drastic improvement over the first two scopes. The picture was much more clear and less washed out, and again, I attributed this to the improved lighting. Height adjustment was much easier than before, and the scope is always held at a bird's eye view, so it never ends up aiming at some arbitrary angle, which was a problem on both previous scopes. The max field of view was slightly less than the last scope, and the base plate was a little too small small when working with larger objects. I was able to improve both issues simply by rotating the scope to the opposite side of the plate to aim it at my regular work surface. Overall, this is definitely the best scope of the three, but not without its caveats as I mentioned. So nothing too shocking here. Spending more money gets you better stuff. I think I'll be testing this one out further in future repairs. I should point out that all the scopes we looked at are monoscopic, meaning there's only one lens so you don't get any real sense of depth in the image. In certain applications, including soldering, this can be problematic. Stereo microscopes have two lenses which solve this problem, at least when you're looking through the viewfinder rather than at a screen. Those can range from around $300 for a cheap option to thousands for something nicer. And I wasn't ready to pull the trigger on that just yet. I haven't always had a microscope, but I've always had useful repair videos. Oh look, there's some on the screen now. Please go check those out, hit subscribe, and let me know what you thought in the comments. Have a great day everyone, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.